studying the Vedic knowledge of the Upanishads. Sankhya Yoga. By reading the literature of Sankhya Yoga. Cha. And. Satvatai. By the great sages and devotees. Or by reading Vaishnava Tantra. Panchatattva. Upadhyamana. Mahatmyam. Whose glories are worshipped. By all these Vedic literatures. Harim. Unto the Supreme Personality of God. Sa. She. Amanyata. Considered. Ordinary. Atmajam has her own son. And translation of purport by his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 1515, by the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, the purpose of studying the Vedas is to understand him, Vedasya Sarvarda Hameva Vedya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained to Sanatana Goswami that there are three purposes in the Vedas. One is to understand our relationship with Krishna, Sambandha. Another is to act according to that relationship, Abhidheya. And the third is to reach the ultimate goal, Prayojana. The word Prayojana means necessities, and the ultimate necessity is explained by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahan. The greatest necessity for a human being is the achievement of love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here we see that Mother Yashoda is on the highest stage of necessity, for she is completely absorbed in love for Krishna. <clears throat> in the beginning, the Vedic purpose is pursued in three ways, trai, by karma kanda, jnana kanda, and upa, upasana kanda. When one reaches the complete perfect stage of upasana kanda, one comes to worship Narayana, or Lord Vishnu. When Parvati asked Lord, <coughs> Lord Mahadev, Lord Shiva, what is the best method of upasana, or worship? Lord Shiva answered, Aradhana Nam Sarvasham Vishnu Aradhanam Param. Vishnu, Vishnu, Pasana, Vishnu Pasana, or Vishnuardhana, worship of Lord Vishnu, is the highest stage of perfection, as realized by Devaki. Om Vajnana Timanandasyagrantana Chakaya Chakshurvata Smaya Sri Guru Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Krishna Chakshamdina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kata Maham Tarati Shvavarantikam Namo Vishnu Paraya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tidane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Shri-Krishna-Kritanya-Prabhu-Nityananda-Shyakritya-Gadadha-Shiva-Sadi-Gaur-Bhakta-Vinda-Hare-Krishna-Hare-Krishna-Krishna-Krishna-Hare-H
Namaste Sudamne Spurantitidamne, that I worship this first thing he says, I worship this uh, very beautiful effulgent rope, which according to Sanatana Goswami is like uh, from that rope emanates the effulgence of the Supreme Personality of God in Brahman. And then Padio Darayata Vishvasyadamne. And then I worship that transcendental belly of the Supreme Personality of Godhead within which all the universes are contained. And then I worship Srimati Radharana. So this is the ascending order of uh, importance of the ascending order of, of being glorious. The first glorious thing is the rope. So here in this verse, as we've discussed, Dvaya uh, Chopanisha, Dvaya Cha Upanisha. So Srila Prabhupada has broken it down basically in three ways, in two ways of three divisions. Now, first way is that there are the Vedas, then the Upanishads, and then the Pancharat, or the, the worship. The first description of how to perform Karmakanda, then description of Jnana Karma, and then uh, Jnana, uh, the Jnana Yoga, and then the description of Bhakti Yoga. Of course, within the Jnana Yoga, there's uh, the looking for Jnana, and looking for mystical perfection. And then the highest is worshiping the Supreme Lord according to the Vedic injunctions. So I just, just thought of two verses from Srimad Bhagavatam that emphasize that this is actually the beginning of spiritual life. The, when you come to the point of worshiping the Lord. Otherwise, all the Vedic knowledge, everything else, which is actually one of the meanings of this particular rope, always being incomplete. Otherwise you can't, by uh, Upanishadic knowledge, by Vedic knowledge, as Krishna says to Arjuna, Tragunya Vishaya Vedanis Tragunya Baba Arjuna. Arjuna, be very careful with the Vedas because they mostly deal with the three modes of material nature. So, you can't understand Krishna by this. You can't bind Krishna, you can't secure Krishna, you can't be fully Krishna conscious just by these methods, by, by, by cultivating jnana, or by cultivating uh, karma, by being doing everything very nicely. So, uh, just one verse from the second canto, I won't read the Sanskrit translation. Unless the gross materialist, this is speaking about the progress from the Virat Rupa up to the uh, understanding the Lord as a yogi. <coughs> Unless the gross materialist develops a sense of loving service under the Supreme Lord, the seer of both the transcendental and material worlds, he should remember or meditate upon the universal form of the Lord at the end of his prescribed duty. So otherwise, it's saying that if you don't know, if you can't understand the Supreme Lord, then you're stuck in Karma Yoga or Jnana Yoga. And another verse, one should concentrate his mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who alone distributes himself in so many manifestations, just as ordinary persons create thousands of manifestations in dreams. One must concentrate his mind on Him, the only all blissful absolute truth. Otherwise, one will be misled and will cause his own degradation. So otherwise, the, the Bhagavatam here is saying that if you don't come to this third stage of worshiping Krishna and seeing Him as the actual goal, then then spiritual life, there is no spiritual life. It's not spiritual. It's just some process of Sankhya Yoga, analysis. So, 
<clears throat> so what does that all mean? That means that uh, we worship the rope. Uh, the rope is worshipable. Why? Because it's being touched by Mother Yashoda. Therefore, the rope is worshipable. And because it's touching the body of the Supreme Personality of God. But without uh, bridging the gap of those two fingers, which I'm sure have been amply described in previous explanations, you know, one of the most important factors in this whole pastime, these two fingers of the devotee. Actually, sometimes we say, first one is the devotee's endeavoring, just like Mother Yashoda endeavored, perspiring her uh, flowers coming, falling from her hair, struggling so hard, looking for all the ropes in Vrindavan, even when her friends were saying to her that, just give up, Yashoda. Krishna has defeated you. No. Just give up. Stop. You won't be able to do it. <coughs> sometimes Maya says that to us. No. You can't do it. And so, but her great endeavor, Krishna noticed her and his, her endeavor and Kripa, then he gave his mercy. But actually the Kripa comes first, especially in our case. We get the mercy of the Vaishnavas. We get the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then we can endeavor to serve Krishna. Actually there's one verse spoken by Muchukunda after Krishna has liberated him from his sleeping condition. After Krishna has re uh, released him, then he says that after wandering, I can't remember the verse now, but after wandering so many, so many millions and zillions of years uh, throughout the universe, and suffering so much, you know, after you suffer so much, then finally you will come to the point of being eligible to enter into the contact with the devotees of the Lord, and by their mercy, will be able to take up devotional service. But actually, by the uh, uh, Jiva Goswami comments, she probably mentions it, uh, Jiva Goswami comments that this verse is actually in reverse. Because the first thing you have to do, the only possibility to approach Krishna is to get the mercy of the devotees. Then you can make your endeavor to get out of material existence and worship Krishna. And just like in the fourth verse of this particular prayer of Satyavata Muni, Idam Teva Purnata Gopala Baba. And he says that uh, the only thing I want is to see this form of Gopal, you know, this wonderful childlike form of Gopal. Otherwise, if I don't have that, then even uh, even uh, any type of, of blessing, even the nine processes of bhakti yoga, whatever I can receive from those nine processes is of no use to me. So sometimes that sounds pretty, you know, revolutionary. That we're all aspiring for the nine processes of devotional service mentioned by Sri Prahlad Maharaj. And he's saying, this is no use to me. Well, what does he actually mean? Are we supposed to give up these nine processes and just get a little Gopal, Bala Gopal deity and look at him all day? No. It means that, first of all, it's explained by Sanatana Goswami, that you can't see Krishna uh, with these material eyes. Because he's speaking of seeing Krishna. Sadame Manas, you know, that, that I just want to see within my mind. And then later on he says, with my eyes. And that I want to see with my eyes. So Sanatana Goswami explains, he refers to his own work, the Brihat Bhagavatamrita, that actually he could not see Krishna, uh, Gopanath, Ananda Gopu Kumar could not see Krishna until he ascended to the spiritual world, until he came to Vaikuntha. Therefore, there's no question, he's not talking about material eyes. He's talking about seeing him beyond the vision in the mind. Just like when Uddhava, is praying to uh, is glorifying the gopis. He says in those last few prayers where he's just become so overwhelmed by the devotion of the gopis, gopis that he uh, he he says he prays that <clears throat> that uh, let me be a a guya lata oshadi no. Let me be a creeper or or some kind of plant 
or some kind of herb within the Vrindavan so I can get the dust of their lotus feet on my head. So then he also says that actually uh, the position of these gopis is so special because Brahma and Shiva and Lakshmi, they can see Krishna with the mind. But the gopis, they can embrace Krishna around his neck. They can see him with their eyes. They can touch him. They can feel him. They can perceive him through all of their transcendental senses. Therefore, this vision is a totally spiritual vision. So what he's basically saying is that first of all, if you don't have that vision, just like Sri Prabhupada mentions here in the purport, of prayojana, if you don't have as your prayojana, as your ultimate goal, as your ultimate necessity in life, the, uh, the, the worship of Krishna, uh, serving Krishna, and pleasing Krishna, then the nine processes of devotional service will simply be a mechanical process. What to speak liberation. Krishna says in the fifth canto of the Bhagavatam that I can give liberation to anyone very easily. That's not a problem. Although certainly it's not so easy. That even great austerities and, and penances to get liberation in the Brahman and to get liberation in the spiritual world, one has to develop uh, spontaneous love of Krishna. So Krishna is speaking about Brahman liberation. I can give that. But to give myself, to give myself to the devotees, then that I can't do very well. I won't do because that means they will have control of me. No. I don't want to put myself under the control of someone who is not qualified, just like us. No. How do we surrender to Krishna? We surrender to Krishna uh, by finding a devotee who inspires us. And when a devotee inspires us, us, automatically we will follow them. Automatically we will be controlled by them. But if someone tries to control us by rules and regulations, okay, that's, as long as I accept the path of discipline, I can accept rules and regulations and discipline from anyone. But ultimately, who can conquer me? Who can conquer my heart? Only someone who, uh, who I see as my superior. So when Krishna sees Mother Yashoda, this is the purpose of this particular verse. When he sees Mother Yashoda as his superior, he can be conquered by him. When he sees Sridham and Sudam as his equals, who actually defeat him in fighting, then he can be conquered by them. And even Krishna can be conquered by the love of those who are his servants, or even by the cows of Vrindavan, or the plants of Vrindavan. Just like in the 10th canto, here in the 10th canto, it explains that when Krishna and Balaram are walking through the forest of Vrindavan, then uh, <clears throat> Krishna said, just see, Balaram, how these trees laden with fruits are bowing down and offering all of their fruits and flowers to you. Just see how these bees are swarming around your lotus feet because they must be great sages who in their past lives prayed to you very uh, <clears throat> sincerely and now they have been elevated to the platform where they can actually take darshan of your lotus feet. So otherwise he's saying even the acts of those who are whose predominant nature is Shantaras in the spiritual world can conquer you. So when to speak of Mother Yashoda. So uh, this is, this is the, the understanding that's given here. This rope is very wonderful, but it actually becomes wonderful. <coughs> Otherwise, the process of Brahman, realization, cultivation of knowledge, this is all very wonderful if it's connected by surrender and connected by receiving Krishna's mercy. Because some people may, try, may surrender, but they don't receive Krishna's mercy in the sense that they don't surrender properly. Just like when Gopal Bhatta Goswami came from Varanasi uh, to uh, Jagannath Puri, when he was finally granted the opportunity to be able to associate with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which was his desire throughout his whole life, 
because he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was a very young boy. And from that point on, just like Raghunath Das Goswami also, <coughs> both, of the, both, both of the Raghunaths. And when they saw Lord Chaitanya, that's the only thing they wanted to do. So on the way he met one, one Brahmana, Ramadas. And this Ramadas was always speaking the name of Ram. And so Gopal Bhatta thought, oh, he must be a great devotee. He so surrendered to Ram. But his surrender was not complete. He begged Gopal Bhatta, let me carry your bags. And Gopal Bhatta said, well, he probably didn't have suitcases like us, a small bag, you know, a piece of cloth with some two or three pieces of cloth to wear. Not like us with big suitcases. No. But uh, anyway, he's, he, he said, no, 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 you're a great Brahmin. It's a hard to carry it. And Gopal Bhatta was thinking he's so humble. So when they arrived, and they saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced uh, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. And he just looked at them, Ramana. And so Gopal Bhatta couldn't understand. But after some time, this Ramdas came back before the Lord. And he said, please, please allow me to enter into your uh, effulgence. And so, then, no, he surrendered. But his surrender was, was with incomplete knowledge. Now, of course, Srila Prabhupada said that even the impersonalists, you know, Krishna is so merciful that even the impersonalists, they have to worship him to get liberation in Brahman, you know, unless they get killed on the battlefield <coughs> by Krishna. Or they happen to die, just Krishna is right there, or his great devotee. Because uh, it's prescribed for them in their process of realization of Brahman that they have to worship the deity. You know, they have to worship the deity of Narayan. So ultimately, they do surrender, but not completely, and not with the right understanding. And actually, surrender of the 26 qualities of a Vaishnava, surrender is the Swarup Lakshan, it is the essential quality. The other qualities may or may, may, or may not be there, as the Vaishnava is trying to develop in devotional service, but this Swarup Lakshan, this uh, essential characteristic has to be there. So. The surrender of uh, these devotees, whether they be in Dasiras, uh, <clears throat> Sakyaras, Vatsaliras, or Maduyaras, where there's no question. If you're in Maduyaras, you must be surrendered. If you're in Vatsaliras, you must be surrendered. In any of these rasas, if you're firmly fixed in this rasa, you must be surrendered. And that will actually bring Krishna under control. Krishna is under the control, we can see that even of devotees, it's considered by the Acharyas that Prahlad Maharaj is at least when he appears before Lord Nisimha, when he appears and Lord Nisimha appears before him, is in Shantaras. Although he develops Dasyara through his prayers. But even the devotee situated like that, the Lord comes to save him. Paritanaya Sadhana. The Lord comes. He's captured, he's controlled by the surrender of his devotee. How Prahlad Maharaj totally depended on him. That dependence is the main, uh, the main theme of this prayer. So then, <clears throat> uh, so in this particular verse, it says, you can go through all these stages, you know, understanding the Vedas, understanding the Upanishads, re meditating on the Supreme Lord, worshipping Him through different authorized processes, you know, which means you have to understand Him. Just like if we go back to the, the first verse, the first verse reflects uh, uh, beginning with Namam Ishwaram. It reflects what is being said in the first part of the last verse, you know, because uh, Sanatana Goswami explains that namam, namami ishwaram, that first thing I do is offer my obeisances to the Supreme Personality of God. And in the last prayer, he's offering his obeisances first to the, uh, as Srila Prabhupada mentions here, he says, uh, quotes from Lord Shiva, speaking to his wife, when she asks him, so, what is the best worship? So, Aradhana. Aradhananam Sarvasham Vishnu Aradhanam uh, Param 
the best worship is Vishnu. But, no, Tasmat Parachanam Devi, but even higher than that, Tadiyanam Samarjana. Even higher than that is worshiping Krishna's devotee. So here we come. Otherwise, <clears throat> everything we've read up to now in this purport and the first part of this verse that we're considering today and the first part of the last verse of the prayer of Satyavata Muni leads us up to the point where we worship Krishna and we worship Krishna's devotee, uh, which is mentioned begins in the first verse, uh, the second verse, uh, all through the, the prayer of uh, Satyavata Muni. We worship Mother Yashoda. Oh. Actually, it says two times in that, that prayer, go, go, uh, Gopi Gopya, which means that uh, to, to, uh, no one can control Krishna like Yashoda Mahi or the Gopis of Vrindavan. They have perfected the art of controlling Krishna. So we'll discuss that in a couple minutes. So, in the first verse, Sanatya Goswami explains that Namam Ishwaram, he says Ishwaram for three reasons. First, Sarva Shakti Manta. That, first of all, Sarva Shakti Manta, that all Shaktis, Parashya Shakti, Vividai Vishwiyate, that all of the uh, Shaktis of Krishna are contained <clears throat> in, in the Supreme Lord. And first I have to address the Lord as the Supreme so that I can have the ability to glorify Him. Just like we see Pallad Maharaj, Juga Maharaj, when they approach the Lord, even when Sridhar, Pallavacha Sridhar, approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they couldn't speak. The Lord had to touch them on the head you know, with His conch shell with his hand, and then they could speak. You know, otherwise, they couldn't glorify Krishna. Because this shakti to glorify Krishna comes from Krishna himself, not something you have. Or you could just, you know, memorize some verses and, or, or you know, make up something. Just like one devotee in 1972, he came to Srila Prabhupada in Mayapur with his guitar. He says, Prabhupada, I made some nice prayers to Krishna. Can I, can I play them for you? Then, being very merciful, Prabhupada said, I took out on his guitar and sang these verses. So he was waiting for Srila Prabhupada's stamp of approval. He said, so Srila Prabhupada, what do you think? He said, it is, it is a nice sentiment. No. Nice sentiment. Mm -hmm. But you should study the prayers of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Naratam Das Thakur. Then you will know how to properly glorify Krishna. So in other words, not following in the footsteps, taking the mercy of the Lord. So, so the first thing he says, yes, one has to understand the Upanishads, all these things. Understand the Lord is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then, Jagatikana. Uh, then you have to understand Him as the controller of the universe and everything with the, in the universe. Otherwise, it's not that I worship Krishna to have something, but I surrender everything. Otherwise, the worship is incomplete. So he's admitting that, Ishvara, you are the complete, and then Nietzsche Prabhu, you are my Lord. So in that, when he, when, with that sentiment, developing, understanding that you, if you're the Lord of everything, you're the controller of all potencies. We, we see that most prayers that are offered to Krishna have these elements. First, you glorify Krishna in a secondary way. You control, you have all kinds of potencies, you control the three modes of nature, you are the Supreme Lord of everything. This is considered to be secondary glorification. And then Nietzsche Prabhu, you are my Lord. Then it becomes personal. Then the Lord becomes the primary object of worship, not the secondary object of worship. You don't see him through secondary uh, means, through material nature, through the modes of nature, but you see him as the Lord of my heart. So that takes us uh, out of the range of the rope and out of the range of the uh, <clears throat> of what in, in his belly, within his transcendental spiritual body, is contained everything. Then you come to the platform of worshiping the supreme personality of God. 
So, Srila Prabhupada continues here to come to a very important point. He just mentioned Devaki. But here, Mother Yashoda performs no upasana. Otherwise, she's not worshipping Krishna. No. Devaki was worshipping Krishna. But Mother Yashoda is not worshipping Krishna. She's gone beyond worship. <clears throat> for she has developed transcendental ecstatic love for Krishna. Therefore, her position is better than that of Devaki. In order to show this, Srila Vyasadev enunciates this verse, Vaya Jopadishad Beard, etc. Otherwise, all these things are very important, but don't get stuck here. Don't even get stuck you know, at the point of uh, worshipping Krishna. But if you really want to join Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan, Gokula Vrindavan, Goloka Vrindavan, then you have to go beyond worship. That doesn't mean we, don't, we stop worshiping Krishna. But the worship takes on the form of seeing Krishna in that specific relationship that we have with him. One becomes so absorbed in that relationship that one's worship, one's loving sentiments and feelings for Krishna are the worship in itself. Of course, Rupa Goswami says, as long as we are in within a material body, we must worship the Lord. No. We, we must respect and worship the deity, we must worship the Lord, and we must follow the rules and regulations of devotional service. Otherwise, the material body can be well dressed, just like in the case of Bharat Maharaj. No. Having a material body and not carefully uh, taking care of that body, not by just giving it food and water, but by Engaging in the service of Krishna, it can be well dressed. So then Srila Prabhupada uh, says, When a human being enters into the study of the Vedas to obtain vidya, knowledge, he begins to take part in human civilization. Then he advances further to study the Upanishads and gain Brahma Jnana, impersonal realization of the Absolute Truth. Then he advances still further to Samkhya Yoga, in order to understand the Supreme Controller who is indicated in Bhagavad Gita, Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitam Paramam Bhavam Purusham Shashvatam Divya. When one understands that Purusha, the Supreme Controller, to be Paramatma, one is engaged in the method of yoga. Jana Vastita Tatkatina Manasa Pashantiyam Yogina. But Mother Yashoda has surpassed all these stages. She has, become, she has come to the platform of loving Krishna as her beloved child. And therefore, she is accepted to be on the highest stage of spiritual realization. The absolute truth is realized in three features. But she is in such ecstasy that she does not care to understand what is Brahman, what is Paramatma, or what is Bhagavan. Bhagavan has personally descended to become her loving her beloved child. Therefore, there is no comparison to Mother Yashoda's good fortune, as declared by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Brahmyakachya Dupasana Rajabhadu Varvina Yakalpita. <clears throat> the absolute truth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, may be realized in different stages. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 411, as men surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. O, o son of Pita. One may be a karmi, a jnani, a yogi, and then a bhakta or prema bhakta. But the ultimate stage of realization is prema bhakti, as actually demonstrated by Mother Yashoda. So, at the very end of his prayer, after fully glorifying Mother Yashoda, and her ability to control Krishna by tying him with these ropes, by endeavoring so much to please Krishna. Then he says, Namo Radhikaya Padiya Priyaya. Now he's described, <clears throat> actually, this particular verse that we just read, that we read today, is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur said, it is the Pari Bhava verse of, the, of Krishna Vila. This verse is the regula regulating verse for all of Krishna Lila. Which means that if you don't understand that Krishna Lila is beyond 
all uh, processes. That actually Krishna Lila and the understanding of Krishna Lila can only be fully uh, assimilated by development of frame of bhakti. So this verse is a regulator. It, it helps us understand the, the differentiation, the, the marginal lines between <clears throat> mechanical service and spontaneous service, between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raghunuga Bhakti, which is why I chose this verse, because then he makes, he takes it a step further. So if we're going to be talking about Krema Bhakti, then let me mention, no, now we're talking about Krema Bhakti. We've firmly established the Krema Bhakti. How have we established it? By Mother Yashoda's love, and also in the seventh verse, by uh, how Narada Muni, even though he's not situated in Vatsali Ras, but Narada Muni has also bound Krishna. No. So, if we're going to speak about binding Krishna, let me mention Namo Radhikaya, Tvadiya Priyaya. Let me mention Srimati Radharani, who has, no, some, we, we say Damodar Lila, but we say Radha Damodar. So how do we understand Radha Damodar? How can Radha be with Damodar? Up to that point, there were really no really intimate association of Krishna and Radha. Up to the point of Damodar Lila, it's just a baby. How, is, how are we going to have loving exchanges as Radha Damodar? But Radha Rani, even though she was a very young child, later when she heard about Mother Yashoda's, this particular pastime of Mother Yashoda, she became so overwhelmed that she prayed to, to the Lord. She prayed to Lord Narayan because she doesn't pray to Krishna. She prays to Narayan. And please allow me to have this bliss. But there's another meaning to that, which I just wanted to again refer to one verse which I forgot the Sanskrit to, but one verse which mentioned here in the second canto, a very famous verse. Um, find it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna, and Ram, all three at the same time. So it starts out, Prakrala Sadhushtaja Surakshita Raja Lakshmi. So it means that Krishna, he left the opulence of Mathura to go to Vrindavan, which means his love for Yashoda, for Srimati Radharani, for the gopis, is greater than anything, than that for Devaki, that for Vasudev, that for the Yadus, oh, so much greater. So much so that Uddhava said that, actually I think Kamsa has more love for Krishna than I do. Because he was always thinking about Krishna. Whereas we, the Yadus, we think of Krishna very casually, whenever we can. You know? Sometimes we think of Krishna, sometimes we think of my family, sometimes I think of the beautiful gardens here in the world. But, you know, Kamsa was always, so what to speak, then he says, what to speak of the residents of Vrindavan. Oh. So, uh, and then it says, Maya Rikam Dairita Yapshitam Andava Dava. That uh, this means that Krishna was just like a play toy in the hands of Srimati Radharani. So, Tvadiya Priyayai means that Srimati Radharani is Krishna's most beloved. Uh, and Srimati Radharani's most beloved is Krishna. Therefore, because of her worship in the topmost loving devotion, Krishna cannot leave Vrindavan. He can never leave. Because of her. Otherwise, even because of the gopis, he could have left. This is explained by Krishna Chakravarti Thakur and Jiva Goswami. But because of Krishna, he could never, and because of Radha, he could never leave. And therefore, he says at the very end, of this prayer. Namo radhikaya tvadiya priyaya namanant lilaya devaya tuya. That if I'm going to speak about lila and the perfection of lila, 
as shown here by Mother Yashoda's pastime. Mother Yashoda in his pastime, this verse that we just read was the last chapter after Mother Yashoda saw the universal form which is contained in the belly of the Supreme Personality of God. Uh, and by seeing that, she was brought under the influence of the Upanishads, the Vedas, and all these things which Srila Prabhupada mentioned, with the verse mentions and Srila Prabhupada mentions. But then by Yoga Maya, by remembering her relationship with Krishna, by Krishna's grace, she forgot about all that. And it stated that even though at, at this point, you know, in her Leela with Krishna, seeing, looking into Krishna's mouth, seeing the universal form, tying up Krishna, even, even her friends were saying that Krishna must be Narayana. And this was even spoken to her, that Krishna must be Narayana. But she said, well, whatever he is, he's my son. Even Jagannath Mishra, one time he had a dream about a Brahman, and the Brahman was saying, your son is Narayana. Why are you, just, why are you trying to punish him? And so in the dream he said to the Brahman, he may be Narayana, but he's still my son, and therefore I have to, you know, have to bring him up properly. So they may be whatever he is, he's my son. They don't consider it very important to think that Krishna is, is God, the Supreme, the Ishvara. Although for us it's very important, because we're developing. But once we reach the stage of to be a prema bhakta, then the most important thing is, how can I please Krishna? So this last verse of Dhamma Astaka is to reflect that. These wonderful pastimes, meditating on these wonderful pastimes, culminating in Srimati Radharani. Sanatha Goswami says, there's only a slight mention of Radha because this prayer is meant to be recited by everyone. So not everyone is qualified to understand the most intimate loving affairs between Radha and Krishna. Therefore, it's simply mentioned that when you come to this point of, prema, of being a prema bhakta, then you can go into this uh, ananta lilaya devaya tuya. Then you can go into these unlimited lilas and deeper and deeper until you can actually have that understanding which is only hinted at here. Otherwise, you give a hint just like in the movies, you know, they, of course I know none of you go to the movies, but for those that might have gone at some point in their life, they have the preview, you know, or soap opera, it's like, you know, the organ comes on, just tune in next week for to see what happens. Also, this prayer gives us the hint, here is the highest lila with Radha and Krishna. So tune in. Otherwise, keep worshiping Krishna and trying to please Krishna. Then we will tune in by His mercy to, the, to the even deeper and deeper and deeper understanding and anam buddhivaranam as no limit. So anyway, these are we can discuss these verses for endlessly. At least somebody can, probably can, because I'm not so telling you, but uh, other devotees can. And, uh, but anyway, we'll stop here. Uh, I was told this is about the limit. So if there's any questions, of course, anybody that has to leave, I know everybody has service. So. But if anybody has any questions. Maharaj, wonderful class. Thank you so much. It has added uh, import and understanding to the previous people who spoke on the previous speaker who spoke on the other verses. That's all right. Thank you so much. I have one complaint. Not really a complaint, it's a request, okay. if I may. I'd love you to come more often, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, try. I, I would like to do that. But I, then my complaint is, you have to convince everybody in my zone that I can have some more free time. Because <laughs> they're saying I'm not there enough. So I'm always being, feeling guilty. Whenever I come to a place like this, which is like my uh, heavenly planet, compared to many places in my zone. Oh. And I, it's a well-established fact, Maharaj. If a person has a little break from what they do as a routine, then they go back with added enthusiasm. Yes, that's true. But then I, 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 I have to like, a little window of time, I have to go to Vrindavan, Mayapur, you know. But certainly, whenever I get the chance, 
Um, well, whatever were the circumstances, it's probably the end of the day. Does anyone agree with me on this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if, if that's your command, I have no choice. <laughs> whatever the Vaishnava is saying, this whole prayer is about that, you know, that the whole universe is under the control of Mother Yashoda. So, yeah. If it's offensive to command you, then I... There's Mother Yashoda right I there. Question. You're at her lotus feet. So you're under her control. So. Yeah. Oh, any, any other complaints? <laughs> Commands, comments, <laughs> questions? She she heard about these pastimes, and and she was aspiring to have this degree of love that's demonstrated by Yashoda in Namadharma. So therefore, that is the reason that we say Radha Namadharma. But wasn't Radharani's love more power? Yes, it was. But at that point in time, otherwise, then you say Radha Radha Gopinath, or no. I mean, if you want to be, you know. No rasa basa. Because Radha Namara sounds like rasa basa. That how can Radha be with Namara? You know? And so, and we see Radha Namara and Namara playing the flute. So, uh, it's, just, it's just a sentiment. You know? It's a sentiment meaning that, that, that we can justify, we can understand. Just like Srila Prabhupada explained, because some person said that, how can you say Radha Partha Sarva? So Srila Prabhupada said, within Partha Sarati are all Krishna's leaders. They may not be manifest on the battlefield, but that, that name, Srila Prabhupada actually you know, wanted to give that name. Why? There was a reason. Because he's putting Krishna in, in uh, Hastinapur. And because he's putting Krishna in Hastinapur, then Parthasarati would be, so just to explain why he said Parthasarati, he said that. So just to explain why we say that, is because uh, Radharani, actually hearing about these pastimes, increased her desire to, she was praying for the desire to be able to control Krishna, be able to feel, have these feelings for Krishna like Mother Yashoda. Because obviously when she heard that last time, she hadn't had you know, her loving affairs with Krishna yet. She was aspiring for it. So Radha Dhamadar means that Radha Radharani is aspiring to, to have that love and bind Krishna with that love. Which she does, so much so that he can't leave Vrindavan. More than Mother Yashoda. Actually, Srila Prabhupada says in the prayers of Queen Kunti, his purports, he says the, mother, the love of Mother Yashoda, Shoda, chastising Krishna, is more pleasurable to Krishna than hearing all the Vedic hymns. And the scolding of Krishna by Srimati Radharani and the gopis is uh, more pleasing to his ears than all the Vedic hymns combined. So, that's just, it's a sentence. Thank you very much. All glory to Shri Guru, Shri Gauranga, Shri Prabhupada Ki, Shri Kartik Ki, Shri Namarastakam Ki, Daigor Pramandi.